It does kind of feel like we've unfortunately hit this wall when it comes to comedy action movies. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Killer's Game. Now, if you guys don't know what that movie is, I wouldn't be surprised. It doesn't look like many people knew what it was. This movie only made not even six million worldwide, but it's actually not that bad of a comedy action stunt movie. The film follows Dave Bautista, who's a legendary hitman who is unfortunately diagnosed with a pretty terrible disease after having found love with Sophia, I am from Rebel Moon. <laughs> and due to the grief of the situation, he doesn't want to put anyone through it, and he doesn't want himself to go through any issue, but he wants to give life insurance to his lovely lady, so he puts a hit out on himself. And just before the hit goes live, he finds out that he's been misdiagnosed. Now, not only is that one of the biggest fuck-ups I've ever heard of in for terms of like a plot for a movie, but it's such a such a vast contrivance that maybe that might have been a few things that people couldn't get behind. But then once the hit goes live, it's all of these hitmen and whatnot who are after him trying to take out this score, all the while he's trying to reverse the actions of it. Now, is this movie anything special? I would say kind of average. It's got a lot of really pretty big action stars, Dave Bautista, Terry Crews, Scott Atkins, Ben Kingsley's in this for reasons, and he's actually kind of funny in it. To be honest, it actually gave me vibes of War Inc., which is a spiritual sequel to Grouse Point Blank, which I swear all hitmen action comedies derive from. There might be something more prevalent before that, but I always feel that Grouse Point Blank is the movie that started this. And from then on, we've had contrivances, whether it be darker or lighter, sillier or funnier or more action oriented from this movie. This movie is the catalyst of everything that's been good, bad, and in between for action comedy since then involving Hitmen. I'd like to say that this movie does derive a little bit from it as well. And this movie is full of stuntmen. Hell, the guy who's the director, J.J. Perry, he worked on a ton of stunts from movies. The Fast and the Furious franchise, The Rundown, Warrior, the John Wick movies. This guy's been in it for a while. He did Day Shift a couple of years ago, which was actually a pretty decent, again, action comedy, but involving vampire hunters. This one, I feel is okay. It's not like, anything to root home about, but I felt the dialogue was funny. The choreography was pretty good. A lot of use of grenades and people flying away from explosions that really should have killed them. But yeah. It doesn't dip a little bit maybe too much into the silly side, sure, but it does keep that aesthetic that is so well known from the John Wick movies, that very subtle use of subtitles. I've always liked how John Wick did subtitles, and this one, while maybe a, a little bit over much, Scott Atkins and this other guy are these two Scottish hitmen, which they felt they needed to give subtitles for, and I think they were trying to invoke that lock, stock, and two smoking barrels joke involving the guy watching soccer on the telly. I feel like it was a bit much, but otherwise there are a lot of really great transitions in this movie. There's some really good editing transitions that I've seen no one else talk about, and I feel like that should be talked about because they're really good. I felt that this movie had a really good pace to it from beginning to end. It just kept you going, it kept you entertained, it kept you laughing, it kept you going, oh wow, that's actually pretty good. Again, it's not anything to be like, oh my, this is the be-all end-all, but I felt like it actually was pretty decent. It's at least better than a 5.7. Like, what the fuck? How does this have a 5.7 on IMDb? Yet there's shows like The Rings of Power and all this other shit that have 7s and everything, and this movie is that? Like, I, I don't know, I, I thought it, at least it's, a, it's in the 6 range. I think. Overall, if you guys are fans of these kind of movies, I think that The Killer's Game is worthy of a watch. It has pretty decent visuals, it has some great little humor into it. Dave does a pretty good job in this movie, him and Ben Kingsley have some pretty good chemistry I felt, and there's just a lot of really good humor in it. Some of it maybe a little bit lowbrow, some of it a little bit like, eh. I feel that The Killer's Game is worth your time. So that's why I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 7. Honestly, I'm, I'm kind of surprised this movie Fuck me, Long Legs has a better rating than this movie, and I, I thought Long Legs was shit. But those are my thoughts about this movie. Very curious to see what you guys had to say. Let me know in the comments below. In the end, guys, if you enjoyed this review, please leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. I am hammering out more reviews as I can. I am trying to catch up. There's this massive list, which is a whole page long that I've got, that I've got to try and catch up on for movies I didn't see this year. So I am trying, I am trying, I am trying. But anyways, guys, that's all from me. See you guys next time.